You can rest your hands in your lap with your eyes closed. And appreciate yourself for the efforts that are required to get here, to arrive here. It's a part of the schedule of the day, we say in Ayurveda, that's called Dinacharya, the daily cycle. Charya means wheel. Dina refers to the day. So in the cycle of your day, you had to organize waking and doing the morning things you do to keep yourself healthy and vital. And then arriving for class, you have to pace when is your breakfast, when is your lunch. And so there are some logistics involved that you've managed to do to then be here. Let's set aside everything else. And as you're sitting, give a very slight lift to your sternum, to the center of your heart. You might notice that that lift causes um, a beautiful response in the upper back, like a little feeling of activation behind the heart. Set your shoulders very slightly back. And then as you lift the base of your skull, imagine your head just sliding gently back at the top of the spine. So your chin is not forward, but rather the ear lobes move very slightly back. And that might cause a response at the center of the throat or the front of your neck where there's a gentle feeling of toning. So to counter the effects of most of our um, habitual posture things, I mean, the most common things that we see, which is like kyphosis with the chin forward. To counter that, we again, lift the heart gently, feeling the upper back respond. We set the shoulders slightly back and then lift the base of the skull and slide your earlobes slightly back. So you're heart may come up and slightly forward and the base of the skull may come up and slightly back. I'm trying to set you in the plumb line from your heart to your throat, to your head, to the crown of your skull. Now, if you just picture this posture in you, like a posture of coming to attention it's really different than, let's say, the posture of holding the remote while lounging on the couch watching TV. And posture does influence our mood. And our activities do influence our posture. Notice the influence of this posture on your attention, your mind, your heart.
And then please bring your palms together in Anjali Mudra. And we'll chant together Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunaktu. Let's begin. Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunaktu. Savedyang Karavahai Tejas Vinavari Tamastu Mavid Veshavahai Sana Vavatu Sana Bunaktu Savedyam Karavavai Tejas Vinavari Tamastu Mavid Veshavai Sahana Vavatu Sahana Vinavari Tamastu Mavid Veshavahi Om Shanti Om Shanti Shanti Om bow your head to your heart. Release your hands and then open your eyes. Okay, I'm going to scoot back promptly to the chair that I can demonstrate from. I'm sitting on a physio ball right now. And you'll have two chairs. We're only going to use one to get started. So that's why you see I have one chair facing forward and I have one chair just facing sideways. So I also have two blocks here and I would request the same from you. Let me check if my other chair is quiet in this room. It is not quieter. So we will do, <laughs> we'll go with the squeaks from both chairs. Okay, so two blocks close by. Let's take a stance where your feet, thighs and knees are like a tripod with your hips. So that's more stable. Reach back to hold the legs of the chair with your hands. Now, if you don't have long limbs like I don't, when I reach back, I just hold because my arms are already straight. But for some of you, bending the elbows is gonna be more helpful if you've got extra long arms. Rather than reaching down to some awkward place with your long arms, I'm gonna ask you to bend the elbows and slide your shoulders back. And then lift up through your heart like we were just doing in meditation and lift at the base of your skull so that the lift of the heart is not like the lift of the chin trying to make the heart go. And let the breath come down into your pelvis, if possible, low belly and your back belly, the sides of your waist. With the hands back like this, when you squeeze the shoulders back, your shoulder blades will squeeze towards each other. And right now that's appropriate. And then exhale next, go ahead and relax your arms and let them dangle. Let the arms be totally limp, but try to keep this tiny lift at the center of your heart and at the base of your skull. Now, based on the kind of chair you're sitting in, reach your hand pointing backwards. So take the right hand and hold. I've got my hand on the inside of the leg of the chair, so my thumb and finger are splitting the difference there, like that. And when you do that, then roll your right shoulder back. Place your left hand on the inside of your left knee and start twisting to your right. Twist your upper back to the right.
when you're twisting this way, try to keep the lift of the center of your heart and the base of your skull. And then rotate around to face forward. Place your left hand on the back like this. So the thumb and the index finger, they can split the difference again. And then pop the back of your right hand against your right inner knee. Press your right hand against your knee so your shoulders actually stabilize right there. And then rotate to your left. And this rotation is mostly in the upper thoracic. You know, the other parts of the spine are participating, but focus your twist at the heart and keep the center of the heart lifted, the base of your skull lifted. And press your left shoulder back. Inhale one more time. And then exhale, rotate around to face forward. Again, let both arms be limp, but keep the internal lift of your heart and the base of your skull. Okay, now let's place both blocks like a little step stool for your right foot. So I placed my blocks just so you can see, they're both like this. Let me see if I can scoot back and still be in your seat. Place your right foot up on that block, that little step stool that you've made. So your right knee is going to be higher and the left knee is going to be lower, like this. You put the right hand again at the back of the chair so your thumb points out, your palms turn this way. And this time cross your left elbow or wrist. For me, it's going to be my wrist. I don't have long arms and legs. You're going to cross over and twist to your right. So when you're twisting, do press your right shoulder back and also press the left shoulder back so your, your chest and heart are open on the front. The twist should not cause us to feel like an armadillo or a turtle. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your nose. And giving appreciation for all the sensations that your body is presenting. Take one more breath in. And then come around to face forward. Place your right foot down. If you have the foot dexterity, you can slide the blocks over using your feet. Otherwise, use your hands. And take the left hand backwards on the chair so your fingers point back. Cross your right wrist or right elbow over your right knee. And as you're twisting, draw both shoulders back so the chest and heart are open. Yeah, and there's a temptation for the right knee to drift out to the side. But that's not actually needed, so keep it pointing straight on. That's good. And as you're twisting to your left, press your left knee and your right wrist against each other. So there's an activation for your right shoulder girl. Yeah, that's good. And one more breath in, reach up through the crown of your skull. And then come around to face forward and let's place both feet flat on the floor. Let the arms one more time dangle while sensing the lift of the inner body. Okay, now we're gonna take a little bit wider tripod and let's put these blocks, you've got one flat, this is called flat, the bottom block, and one medium. And for those of you who need a little bit more than that, like, for example, if you're sitting in a taller chair, you have 
uh, your taller yourself, you can always make that taller as needed, but don't make it unstable, please. Like don't put two blocks on the tall setting together because it'll be unstable. So you place the left palm flat down, right hand to your right knee, and you're gonna press down with your right hand. Please twist to your right. And as you're twisting to your right, there is some strength in both arms and both shoulders. Maintain the length of your spine. You're welcome to look over your right shoulder or to look down towards the floor based on what your neck is needing right now. And the strength of both shoulders and the elongation of the spine requires some delicate concentration because sensations come up in the body and we start getting distracted. We start daydreaming. The mind wanders to and fro. So maintain consistent tone in the pressure of your arms and a consistent pace in the breath. And when you next exhale, press down through your right hand to return to your seat. Press both hands out over your knees. Between those moments of consistency and activation, we're also having surrender. And if you could imagine that consistency is like an act of self-respect or self-kindness, your dedication to it might increase. Now place your left hand on your left knee, right hand on the block in front of you. Yeah. And press down through your right arm and press into your left hand, twist to your left. Do your best to make the structure of your pose stable. And again, consistent. Lengthen your spine. Notice the pace of your breath and see if you can also make that consistent. And this will require your mental concentration. So the mind that dashes about like a dragonfly needs to concentrate on keeping the muscles steady, keeping your breath pace even. The mind that becomes lethargic also has to concentrate. And the mind that becomes aggressive or overly striving also needs to concentrate but perhaps less ferocious concentration for that mental habit. I'm gonna exhale, roll up to center, press into your left hand to come up. And one more time, let's go feet in and let the arms dangle while keeping the internal gentle lift of the heart and the base of your skull. Now we're going to start using two chairs for a short time in class. We're going to stand up and I'd like you to put the blocks where you won't step on them or trip over them. And come off the stand, please. Put the two upper backs of the chairs to face each other. Like this. So there's a practice in yoga called Sri Namaskar and people are very fond of, of doing it and finding ways to adapt it also. And I think that can be fun and helpful to have like a routine where you're actually breathing, moving, sensing, and one posture is linked to the next. So we're gonna do that here as a modification of sun salutation. So you've got the palms down, one position will be both arms up so long as you're balanced. One position is chair pose where the knees are lined up with the toes like this. One of our positions, we go back up, we come down. And right here, what we're gonna be setting up is one foot forward, one foot back. In this pose, it's like the um, the crescent. You could also think of it as the crescendo of the sun salutation where we go up. And I'll be talking you through that so it's a balanced position, not a, not a wobbly position. And then we all step to change sides. 
And then we're going to step back to the center of the two chairs. Okay, so let's start with the palms out and down. And you can, you can enjoy your chairs. Mine are two different textures, so that's kind of interesting. You press into both feet, energize your legs. Now from the shoulder joint, start turning your palms to face forward. And then inhale, palms up as you rise up. You exhale, bend your knees, or sit down towards chair pose, bring your gaze forward and down so your neck is long, just like we were doing in meditation. And then press into both feet, keep your legs energized. Inhale, rise up tall. If your balance is good this morning, you can also look up. And then exhale, turn your palms face out and press down alongside the torso. Place your hands on the tops of both chairs. Step your right foot forward, left foot back. Put your heel to the floor comfortably and aim both hips forward. It's not the longest distance front to back that you've ever taken. Turn your palms forward. We still got the chairs here for some balance. Okay, lift the center of your heart, the base of your skull. Now, if your balance is feeling steady, keep only your right arm on the side of the chair and raise your left arm up. And if your balance is feeling steady, Raise your right arm up as well. Press into your back heel. That is a part of your balance system. Use the toes of your left foot. Tone your left butt muscles. That's like your tap root or your anchor back here from your hip to your heel. Now, if your balance is feeling steady, Begin to raise your gaze up to the horizon and a little bit above the horizon, maybe where the wall meets the ceiling. And then exhale without looking for the chairs, lower the arms down and place both hands on the chairs. Let's inhale, step your left foot forward, your forward of the chairs. Exhale, bend the knees, step your right foot back. Turn the right heel down. Choose the distance front to back that is stable for you. Palms face out. Raise your heart. And if your balance is feeling stable, begin with your right arm. Palm out to the side. And raise your right arm only as high as you still have an inner sense of your balance. Keep the pressure of the legs consistent, just like we had the hands and the twists to make the legs consistent. If your balance is stable this morning, raise your left arm up. And keeping your back foot steady, press into your heel and your toes and squeeze your right butt muscles. So they're toned, they're not just hanging out there in Shavasana. And keeping that steady is going to require mental concentration, the smoothness of the breath continuing. If that's working pretty well for you, begin to lift your gaze up to where the wall meets the ceiling. And then when you exhale, steady your gaze. Don't look for the chairs. I want you to sense them by proprioception. Lower your hands down. Find the tops of the chairs. Now this time, step your left foot back between the chairs. Step your right foot forward between the chairs. This is called mountain pose. If you have your balance, let the arms dangle. You can also choose to close your eyes. So that's one go through with a sun salutation. Now understanding this position with the legs, we're gonna touch it for a breath or two and then we're gonna transition from it. So when we're stepping, 
you're going to be practicing stepping backwards. We don't practice that very much in baby life. We practice stepping forward with a pretty big step, and most of us don't do that unless we're gardening or somehow we have some bouldering or some hiking. So stepping backwards is a pattern that your brain has to send the proprioceptive of what's behind you. So when you do it, you bend the knees, and I'm going to ask you to find the big toe and then the mount of the toe and then the inner heel. So it's not going to be a quick step back. It's not, we're not racing. We're not practicing to be rock cats either. So for this sun salutation, step forward of the chair. So you're just forward of knowing where you're going to need your feet for this transition. And bring your hands together at your heart. You drop the tailbone down. Good. Let me raise the view so you'll still see my arms overhead. Go like this. Palms together. I made that crooked. I'm sorry, you guys. It's a very sensitive little thing. Uh, one of those flexible tripods that, because it's flexible, it's also sensitive. Okay, just inhale. Concentrate on the pace of your breath, being consistent, not erratic. You can bend both knees, sit down to chair pose. Put your weight into your heels and your toes. Don't forget the heels. Gaze a little bit forward on the floor. Inhale and rise up. Gaze up to the place where the wall meets the ceiling. Then exhale, a wide circle of the arms. Touch your fingers to the chairs. Bend both knees for the transition. Left foot back, big toe. Mount of the big toe, inner heel. Raise your arms if you have your balance. Exhale, descend. Press into your right heel. Inhale, lightly forward. Bend your knees, right toes back. Big toe, now the big toe, inner heel, outer heel. Inhale, raise your arms. Exhale, descend with the arms. Good. Inhale, lightly step forward. Exhale, hands to the heart. Again, inhale. Exhale, chair pose. Gaze a little forward and down on the floor. Inhale, rise up. Now exhale, big circle of the arms, keeping your heart lifted, reach your fingers back for contact with the chairs, bend your knees, okay, left toes back, big toe mound, inner heel, outer heel, inhale, rising. And exhale, descending. Inhale, lightly forward. Use your legs more than your arms, arms for guides. Bend your knees, right toes down. Big toe, mount of the big toe, inner heel, you're doing great. Outer heel, that's it. Rise up with your inhale. Exhale, arms wide. Inhale, lightly step forward. Exhale, hands to the heart. Notice how even that is effective. Makes a shift in your mind, your body, and your breath. And I'm going to ask you to keep one chair as it is, and I'll do that with the chair that's on my left. This is my left for right now. I turn the other chair. Like this, foot points forward. You have two surfaces for balancing with right now. Okay, good. So this is going to be your standing leg, your left leg. Place your right foot up on the chair, sideways. 
can't do that. Now notice that when we place the right foot up, the crease of the hip right here might be inclined to rise because you picked up your hip. Let's see if you can drop that now. Yeah, there you go. And stand firm on your left knee. You take the back of your right hand against the inside of your right knee, just like earlier in one of those twists that we did, and then twist to your left. And the twist is really your upper back right now. So press your right inner thigh long, press the right knee open, keep your right outer hip and your left leg stable. So you're turning your upper back, chest and heart, almost like when you use the pepper grinder and you turn the top, but you hold the base stable. Now gaze to your left and find a point on the wall there that you can keep gazing at. And to make the actions of your legs consistent. So from your left hip to your left foot, there's a consistent tone to the muscles in your leg. Lengthen your right inner thigh without getting forgetful about it. Press your right wrist back against your knee so your right shoulder also presses back. And you may consider raising your left arm out to the side. Palm face up. If your balance is quite good, you can raise your left arm up alongside your left ear. And then when you exhale, lower your left arm if you raised it, or turn your gaze to forward. Lightly touch the upper back of the chair on your left and step your right foot down and come in mountain pose. And you might feel asymmetrical, like a zigzag. Now I'm going to ask you to get your two blocks and place them on the chair that's on your right. So before we turn the, the chairs to the other side, we're going to do another pose in this configuration. So for this one, you're gonna put the two blocks to give you some support and be thoughtful. Turn to face the chair that's in front of you and step your right foot up onto it. Okay. And then place your left hand on the stack of blocks and your right hand on the upper back of the chair. So now this pose has a little bit of flexion, right? We have the torso slightly forward. Press into your left hand and your right hand to help make your left leg and your lower belly stronger. And then begin twisting to your right by pressing down into both hands. Rotate your upper back, your chest, your heart, and your gaze. Now notice the twist in all the places that you notice it. Probably you're not noticing a twist in the pelvis because you want to keep the pelvis steady and centered with your legs consistent. But you may notice the twisting action in the lower belly or near your navel or in your ribs, your upper back, your heart. And start gazing down. So you're going to first acclimate to your gaze moving. And then rise up to standing. And step your right foot back down to the floor. And come to mountain pose. You can scent again, okay? What's the zigzag like now? So there is a balance pose that comes off of that where you pick up your right hand. And that's an adventure. You're standing in the middle of your room, most of you, and you have your one foot on the floor, one foot on a chair. It's, it's kind of a far distance to the floor if you were to fall over. So to be secure about something like that, we build to it. And there's a way to build to it. I'm just going to show you one piece of it from the front because you won't see it when I turn to the side. So if I put my right foot up like this and I started this way with the two hands, we already have a little twist because the left hand's lower than the right hand. So the thoracic rotation is already there. 
To add to that, you can start then by hooking this elbow over to also hold the chair, right? So both hands have a secure place to be. If you take one hand off of its like secure platform here, the left hand, but when you place the elbow, put it on it, one hand on the other hand or both hands to hold the chair. And in time, you may find the confidence and the stability to then raise your right arm up. And that is a big change of dynamic in the pose. So let's try, I think I can keep facing forward so you can see me from this angle and I can see you. So with your left foot, it goes straight ahead, not off to the side, but straight ahead. Place your right foot up on the chair. And let's put the left hand on the right hand. Your blocks just check if they're stable, they're not gonna be wobbly on your chair. You press down into both hands, rotate your chest to your right. And then if your balance is pretty good this morning, what you can do is choose to take your left elbow over your right knee and place your left hand on your right hand. And we're gonna press the left knee, sorry, left elbow and right knee against each other. So there's a stabilization right there. And as you turn your upper back to the right, check that you're also getting some twists into your lower belly. It's not just your head turning, nor is it just the shoulders. And if your balance is feeling stable, and also if you don't find that your right knee is pushing into the center, but stays right there in line with your toes, and the right outer hip is stable, then you can try picking up your right arm. And then let's exhale to come down, right hand to your chair, left hand to your blocks, and rise up to stand. So that's not a beginner's yoga pose. Place your right foot down and take notice what's happening in the zigzag of your body now. Now we will change the chair so we can do the other side. So let's put these blocks you need the upper back of this chair. This is my request for you. And I would like the seat of this chair. And two blocks like that. So holding your right hand on the upper back of the chair to your right, place your left foot up sideways. The blocks aren't really necessary at the moment, but since we have them, if you can do that. And check again when you pick up your thigh like this, if this hip pops up, your snaking's going to be crooked. So try dropping the crease of the thigh and the femur down and energize your right butt and your right thigh, your right foot. Take the back of your left hand and press against your left knee. Roll the left shoulder back. Yeah. And then twist to your right, please. You're keeping the right leg stable and the muscle tone consistent. That again is going to be this concentration in your mind. So the muscle tone, you bring the muscle tone on and you sustain it, not because you're gripping, but because you have, you're cultivating self-respect, self-care, self-love. Consistency is one of the things that we needed in the earliest years of our life to have a sense of safety and security. Making the muscles consistent. So like, for example, the kneecap doesn't get dropped over and over again. You keep some tone around your right kneecap. If your balance is quite good, try turning your head to the right. And even you have the option of raising your right arm out to the side. And more intermediate than that is to raise your right arm up alongside your right ear. It's more intermediate because it changes the dynamics of the balance point. And 
And then let's exhale, lower down with your right hand. Rotate your gaze to center, step your left foot down from the chair. And check and see how things are feeling there. Now we'll set up for our twist going to the left. So if you turn to face the chair that's on your left and place your left foot up on the chair seat and your right hand on the blocks, left hand on the upper back of the chair. Now press down with your right hand against the two blocks, left hand on the upper back of your chair and start twisting your heart to your left. So let's make the action of the right arm, the muscle tone of the right arm and right leg consistent. This downward pressure with your right arm is actually what is initiating your twist. Now, as you're turning, consider if your balance is pretty good this morning, you could choose tone your right leg and butt and then cross your right elbow over your left knee. And your right hand can hold your left hand or it could hold the upper back of the chair. Twist your heart to your left. Anyone for whom your balance is pretty good today, you can raise your left arm up. Keep the right arm pressing down against your left knee. So the right shoulder is not lax, it's actually toned. And then exhale to slowly unwind. Rise up to standing and step your left foot down and return to mountain pose to check in and see, okay, what's happening now? Imagine that like the echo of what's going on, imagine that like the release of tension from the body. Now we'll keep two chairs and to do this, they now face each other. And I have one chair that's padded and one chair that's not. I'm gonna recommend the padded chair is the one you put your leg up on because it's nice to have padding to the back of the calf. And of course, if you have a blanket, you can always put it on the chair that you're sitting on. So you don't have to sit on just the metal chair if you don't want to. And let's take the, let's see, um, this is my, this is my right leg. So I won't mirror at the moment because it won't make sense to me. So take your right foot up on the chair in front of you and step the left foot a little bit out to the side on this diagonal leg. Okay, and the right leg straight ahead, face towards your chair and your right hand. Let's take the right hand behind on the chair seat like we did earlier. So I've got my hand turned backwards. Take the left hand of the back of your back of the hand to the inside of your knee and twist to your right. So this pose starts with a twist to the right and then raise your left arm up alongside your left ear, gaze at the toes of your right foot. And as you exhale, start coming forward to hold the upper back of the chair in front of you or to hold your right toes or to hold the stack of blocks. And then rotate your heart to your left shoulder, I'm oh, sorry, right shoulder and your gaze to the right. Notice how you have a little bit of work to do on keeping the left knee open to the left. Okay, sweep your right arm around to go forward and based on your body proportions and your flexibility, come out over to rest your head on the blocks. You want this to be a very mentally restful position. 
even though I know your right calf muscle or hamstring might be talking with you right now. And I do want you to keep your left knee consistent. It does not need to feel urgent or stressed, but keep the left knee pressed open. And raise the base of your skull and glide yourself back up to sitting. Okay, let's take the right foot down and then left leg up. So that means that you're going to put the right foot and knee out to the side. It's about 45 degrees out. And then facing towards your left leg, put the back of your left hand, or the outside, excuse me, the, the palm of your left hand on the back of your chair, and the back of your right hand against the inside of your right knee. And twist to your left. And in this twisting, it may feel like it's really the upper back and heart. Keep that at like a half an eye mentally on your right knee staying open. And gazing towards your left leg, raise your right arm up, please. And as you come out, you can have the left hand on the chair behind you, right hand towards the chair in front of you, and the twist is to the left. To keep the right knee open is to again have like a, a half of a mental eye <laughs> on your right knee and right hip. Sweep your left arm out over the upper back of the chair in front of you. And depending on your body proportions and your flexibility, of course, you can support your head. You may need a higher support than what I'm using. Let yourself be inward and quiet. The breath consistent. The amount of muscle tone in different parts of your body is different but they can each express a consistency of action. Walk back down to the seat of the chair and rise up to sitting and step your left foot down. Now we have a wide seat like a tripod from where we started earlier. And let's take the support for your head with your forearms on the seat of the chair. And I like the support for the head to be high enough that you feel like the shoulders and the neck are breaking down from the base of the skull. You're welcome to close your eyes and let this be an inward restful pose. Gently breathing in and gently breathing out.
And please walk your hands back to your knees and rise up to sitting. So we, we ended with a symmetrical pose there to help everything to quiet down. Let's take this to Shavasana. You need only one chair. And I would say um, put the other chair aside if the one you're not going to be using. And you don't need your blocks right now either. So you can also put them aside. And let's bring a couple of blankets onto the mat. I love to have this waterfall pose be our finishing pose because it's very calming to the nervous system. And it's a good way to integrate. And so we're going to come down and place the left hip, roll onto your side, and then roll onto your back. Let's put the soles of the feet together for a few moments. So what you've got is a chance to open the lower pelvis and the inner thighs. And you might find, because we do this pose from time to time, you might find that the sequence we just had, something's more easeful about this pose now. It's so good that you're taking care of yourselves. We need more citizens taking care to be best versions of themselves. Let's bring the knees up and you can use the upper back of the chair for your feet. And sometimes that means you're gonna give a little push to the chair like that. Other times you can put the feet through the back of the chair. The toes are free either way. Yeah. Please bring your head to center. Allow your mind and your body to relax deeply. Thank you. 
the muscles that were involved in the actions of the poses. They can practice deeply surrendering. Continue allowing the muscles to get heavier, more deeply relaxed, the mind quieter, your brain and your senses more and more at ease.
deeper and deeper sense of ease, even the possibility of stillness Just for another minute or two, resting without daydreaming, without boredom, without planning or reviewing, Just simply resting. And slowly welcome a slightly deeper breath. Some awareness out to your fingers and your toes. When you're ready to, you can let the knees come towards the chest and sort of fall in towards the chest. And then roll down to your side. And use both hands to come up. When you come up to sit, take a comfortable and upright seat. I'm going to shift my seat so I can be closer to you. And also, I need to avoid a light beam that's coming through my curtains. Let's rest the hands in the lap, please. And close your eyes if you prefer. And we'll try to feel the quality of inner stillness or the possibility of inner quiet that you just cultivated. What a blessing it is to have a practice that we can keep returning to our sanity, clarity, and equanimity. And I know that those of you who are here for this practice, you also wish this for others. 
they can come back to their clarity, sanity, equanimity. Thank you for being here. You can bring the hands together at the heart. Namaste. I feel it's so wonderful to practice with you all in this manner. It's slower. It's intimate for the body to feel these stable, simple positions. These are not beginning poses we didn't do today. These are more intermediate, but wow. To change the pace of life for an hour and 10 minutes, an hour, 15 minutes, so a real blessing. Thank you for being here and for wanting this kind of practice. So I'm, I'm here to offer what I also love to practice. How are you feeling?